Hello, I'm Forrester, and welcome to the eighth installment in my Kerbal Space Program series, No Kerbals Died, the hard mode career where I look to keep our adorable green astronauts alive throughout. Thankfully, this episode, the risk to Kerbals is next to zero, as the mission is to launch unmanned satellite relays. With these hard mode settings and only a single ground station at the launch site, Building a satellite network is critically important in order to control unmanned craft, as well as return valuable science points without having to recover a spacecraft. As far as design is concerned, very, very straightforward for this. We've got a long body, mostly containing fuel and batteries. Uh, on the top, a docking port junior in case of recovery. Some basic science in case there's a need to do missions in space and the fixed solar arrays. Of course, also two relays for communications. And here, because it's nice and light, I able to use a very simple rocket just to get this into space. And we have liftoff for the first of the four satellites that we'll be launching today. Call them the Whisper series, uh, just because although they have got the relays on them, the strength isn't fantastic but it'll serve to get an initial network up and running. I have sped up the footage here because we've got four launches plus lots of adjustments to make and uh, otherwise we'd be here for quite a while. Here blasting up past 17,000 meters and we have main engine cut off. I do enjoy launching these very very light rockets, they're quite satisfying to launch. So they're just using one of the rescue pods that I have in orbit just to try and get as close to an equatorial orbit as possible. I'm also launching very, very high. Usually I would start translating into horizontal speed a lot earlier. But in this case, because this is the very first launch, I have to stay within line of sight of the space center. Otherwise my probe becomes uncontrollable. and they deploy the fairing and the two relays are deployed as well. Do like the look of satellites in Kerbal Space Program. So the first network as I say is particularly difficult because the only ground station I have in this hard mode career is down at the Space Center so once you get outside of line of sight of that Space Center but no control on the probe so you need to make sure that the satellite is in a great position prior to that just so that it, the orbit doesn't decay whilst you're out of control and that's exactly what I'm doing here so I've got my periapsis up above the minimum and just tweaking the orbit And I'm not looking for perfect, certainly not at this point anyway. You know, I'm just trying to get the first four satellites out into space, and then I'll start worrying about tweaking the orbits once they're in control. So here, launching the second, somewhat creatively named Whisper number two. Again, blasting up past 18,000 meters for main engine cutoff. So one of the first spacecraft to actually provide relay capabilities was the Pioneer 1 lunar probe back in 1958. It's pretty much just proved the concept. And then the first kind of comms relay was Telstar in 1962. That would do TV phone calls for very short bursts. And there we have the second satellite now in orbit. Now we go for the third, Whisper 3, lift up. So although those were some early examples of relay satellites, actually this is probably most similar what I'm doing here to the early TDRS launches. Um, albeit without the space shuttle, the TDRS launches, the Tracking Data Relay Satellite. Um, essentially that was launched to increase the time that spacecraft can talk to ground stations. Um, 
Although, again, you know, I've, I've got a few things here that are a little bit different for Kerbal. Um, you know, I've not launched it from a shuttle, and I'm not really looking for anything geostationary here at this point. Just getting an initial network up and running. Do look good seeing a, a relay in space. A little bit of tweaking here. So now that I've got three launched, I spend a little bit longer in control of the probes because they're able to relay the signal from each other already. So just using that opportunity to tweak things as I prepare to launch number four. And here we go, take off for number four. Something very satisfying about the short rockets. These are the very, very basic rockets that I first used to get a capsule into orbit. And because the payload on the top is nice and light, I'm able to reuse them very, very cheap to launch. Now, it is worth my adding that I don't necessarily make any money off this straight away. So these satellites don't fulfill any contracts or anything like that. Sometimes I do get a contract to uh, recover science from space around Kerbin and clearly having the thermometer on these satellites makes that very, very easy. So they usually do pay themselves off over time. But actually this is more about getting the capability of having that relay network linked up around Kerbin so that I can actually have unmanned crafts launched in the future. And at this point, I'm just switching between the craft, just tweaking the orbits. Now, I'm not looking for something perfect here either. Um, in fact, I, I know what I come up with at the end of the video is not perfect. Uh, I know that later on in the career, I will want to launch more powerful relays and also get global coverage across the, the Kerbin planet. So this is an equatorial a uh, little network which is easy for now and it gives a basic 99% coverage so just needs to be good enough. Now I have got uh, on each of these I've got two relays, two HG5 relays so I've actually got that in the uh, the map on the bottom which just shows which phase each of the launches is at, that HG5 of the two little relays attached to the outside and again they just give a reasonably good initial coverage for the comms network. And now as I'm tweaking these orbits I'm starting to see that actually um, I've got control over the vast majority of the time even before I've got these perfectly in position. Lots of work in the tracking station just to try and get them circularized when they're in the right place in the orbit and in the right place relative to each other. Of course, made slightly more complicated by the fact that the probe core on each of these is one of the most basic probe cores. So I do have stability assist, which is the only thing that I've got going for me, but I've got no prograde or retrograde hold, so I'm having to do each of the maneuvers manually. I have put um, a little bit of uh, a thrust on the engine, so I'm able to reduce that to about 0.5, and that way I don't go too far. And here we are, just going through the final touches. As it looks like, I've got my four satellites more or less in position. Yeah, just ever so slight tweaks here. I've gone for 300 kilometers, which should be high enough to avoid any space stations that I launch later. There we have it.
And so, as the 8th episode concludes, please continue to like, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and get involved by giving me encouragement, or otherwise, in the comments. I happily leave you with the ubiquitous closing remark for every mission in this series, no Kerbals were harmed in the making of this video.